In today's video, we'll break down the anatomy and kinesiology behind Francis Ngannou's brutal knockout against Henan Ferreira. All right, so this first use a really snappy leg kick against the first fight. I just wanted to appreciate it because you know I like big guys that move fast. My last video was on Aspinall, and we talked about how these big guys really enjoy the privilege of, of manipulating the, numerate, the numerator uh, and the denominator. If they move really quickly and they're big, that just increases the power for in, in both directions. Okay, so when he steps forward here, he doesn't externally rotate that hip he doesn't really step out like we've looked at this roundhouse kick before even though this is a leg kick we've looked at the roundhouse kick and he doesn't externally rotate that lead leg when he plants it so it doesn't give him a lot of room to move about that hip uh, he gives he's got a lot of hip extension so that stretch reflex particularly for the muscles the hip flexors like the rectus femoris that cross the hip and the knee so they flex the hip and extend the knee whenever he brings his hips around uh, and it ends up not being an issue that he didn't accurately rotate this leg. One, because he has pretty good knee mobility and he's still getting a fair amount of, it's actually closed chain hip internal rotation, but he's got a good amount of hip mobility so it kind of gives the illusion that he's externally rotating. Once he makes contact, you can see how his center of mass is behind his foot that's planted. Uh, so that actually makes it a little bit easier for him to get that foot back after he makes contact. So I also want you to notice when he throws this, boom, he's got that really nice trunk flexion along with that hip flexion. So that global flexion movement down the kinetic chain into contact, which is really good. He does kind of what the ties do. Oh, let's go back. He goes, he kind of does what the ties do with that other arm. So he gets that big horizontal abduction and extent and extension a little bit for muscles like the posterior delt and the lats that, that really kind of help with that momentum and that whipping effect across the transverse plane since this would be a vertical axis and he is moving globally along the transverse plane. So let's take, take a step through it again. Not a lot of internal rotation on that front leg, but his center of mass is kind of hanging behind. He gets good trunk flexion, good hip flexion and the extension lands well, he gets a really big arm swing, and then he's able, since his center of mass is kind of lagging behind, he loses a bit of power there, but most of the movement is around the transverse plane, or the, a vertical axis around a transverse plane. And then he moves back. So let's watch it full speed. I'm starting to run into a problem where I have more questions than I can answer, pertaining to injury advice, biomechanics, anatomy, etc., which is a good problem to have. Up until this point, I've answered almost all of your messages. However, I'm still doing this part-time and seeing patients, so I'm running out of time during the day. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop answering questions on my Instagram DMs and my email. So if you have questions for me, I've created a Patreon account. There's only one tier, which is set at $5 a month. So if you just wanna generally support or you wanna be a part of the only place that I'll be answering questions, consider checking out my Patreon. Now back to the breakdown. This next video I look at is less biomechanical and more of an appreciation of the timing here. Uh, you could tell that he knew that Ferreira wanted to time his jab, so he fakes the jab and Ferreira throws that overhand and the level change is really nice. A lot of trunk flexion here, really rapid trunk flexion. It would, I don't know if he meant to do this, but it would have been really nice to see him change the level of his shoulders and the hips at the same time. He kind of just bends at the waist. Uh, but just really nice appreciation of that kind of fake jab and then level change. And then for those of you who watched the fight, you know he hit the, you know he hit the takedown after that. But that was really nice. And we'll watch this one more time just to get an appreciation of, of how fast this actually was. Super fast. All right, so this is the, this is the absolutely brutal view. Uh, I think he should have stopped it a little bit before this. Uh, Fernando was almost lifeless at the end of this. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys, it's a little bit of a different angle. Okay, we've looked at the hook before, but this is horizontal. He, the body is completely horizontal. Uh, and Ngannou being able to kind of do this and, and manipulate his body in a way, in a really athletic way like this, is just why people like him are so dangerous. Those big guys are so dangerous. So one thing I want you to pay really close attention to is the importance of actually planting this leg on the ground. So this is, this is starting that kinetic chain. We can actually transmit, still transmit a lot of force when we're grounded with our feet 
even though we're kind of horizontal to the ground like this. Whenever he plants that leg, he's actually allowing his knee to extend and his hip, his, his right hip to extend using the glutes and the quads co-contracting right there. And that helps him with right relative lumbosacral and thoracolumbar rotation. Okay, so that gives us that good shoulder or hip and shoulder separation that we've talked about in the past. Now, it's kind of hard to see the planes of the hip and the shoulder, but if you look right here, they're relatively, if you were to draw a line between the two hip bones, okay, so straight through and then straight through the shoulders, you could see that whenever he presses that leg a hip up and then rotates to the right, his shoulders are actually, he, he actually moved the shoulders in the opposite way. So his shoulders are, are almost perpendicular to his hips at this point because he's got his right hand kind of tucked under here. So right here. So the shoulders are almost perpendicular to the ground and the hips are still are, are parallel to the ground, which is a massive amount of separation, which we know helps the stretch reflex both at the trunk and the muscles like the external and internal obliques on the opposite side. And then the pec major and the anterior delt for that hook for when he comes through concentrically with horizontal adduction. Okay, so he, whenever he brings his hips to the right, his shoulder is, stays in relative horizontal abduction and scapular retraction. And then he brings it through concentrically after that eccentric elongation, very quick amortization phase. And then he lands punch, hip switch after punch, hip switch, punch, hip switch. And this is why it's so important to watch this is back up. Every single time he throws that punch, watch his foot, boom. Plants, boom. Plants, hip switch, boom. You can see that energy moving from the ground through his leg and his hips into his torso and out of his extremity. Does a very good job of being athletic here. And we all know who watched this. He lasted a couple of shots too long there, but what a beautiful way to finish a fight. I'll let you watch it all the way through and just watch it in full speed because it is a really cool display of athleticism here. He plants every single time he throws a punch. Absolutely brutal. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.